Today is the feast of St. James the Great, apostle and martyr, first of the apostles to die as a martyr for Christ. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant a most merciful Father for his sake that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise you, the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The King and Lord of the Apostles, O, o come, come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. And to whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The King and Lord of the Apostles, O, o come, let, let us adore, adore him. him. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 119, parts 20, 21, and 22, begins on page 500 of the 1928 prayer book. O consider my adversity and deliver me, for I do not forget thy law. Avenge thou my cause and deliver me, quicken me according to thy word. Health is far from the ungodly, for they regard not thy statutes. Great is thy mercy, O Lord. Quicken me as thou art wont. Many there are that trouble me and persecute me, yet do I not swerve from thy testimonies. It grieveth me when I see the transgressors, because they keep not thy law. Consider, O Lord, how I love thy commandments. O quicken me according to thy loving kindness. Thy word is true from everlasting. All the judgments of thy righteousness endure forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning 
is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. I am as glad of thy word as one that findeth great spoils. As for lies, I hate and abhor them, but thy law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise thee, because of thy righteousness. Great is the peace that they have who love thy law, and they have none occasion of stumbling. Lord, I have looked for thy saving help, and done after thy commandments. My soul hath kept thy testimonies, and loved them exceedingly. I have kept thy commandments and testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let my complaint come before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. Let my supplication come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. My lips shall speak of thy praise, when thou hast taught me thy statutes. Yea, my tongue shall sing of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteous. Let thine hand help me, for I have chosen thy commandments. I have longed for thy saving help, O Lord, and in thy law is my delight. O oh, let my soul live, and it shall praise thee, and thy judgment shall help me. I have gone astray like a sheep that is lost. O oh, seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. First lesson is written in the 45th chapter of the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The prophet's disciple warned against worldly ambition. In those days, the word that Jeremiah the prophet spake unto Baruch the son of Neriah, when he had written these words in a book at the mouth of Jeremiah, in the fourth year of Jehoiakim the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Unto thee, O Baruch, thou didst say, Woe is me, for the Lord hath added grief to my sorrow. I fainted in my sign, and I find no rest. Thus shalt thou say unto him, The Lord saith thus, Behold, that which I have built will I break down, and that which I have planted I will pluck up, even this whole land. Seekest thou great things for thyself? Seek them not. For, behold, I will bring evil upon all flesh, saith the Lord, but thy life will I give unto thee for a prey in all places whither thou goest. Here endeth the first lesson. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty. Thine adorable, true, and only son. Also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, Thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee. And we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded.
The second lesson is written in the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark, beginning at the 14th verse. The calling of James and John, his brother. At that time, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the Gospel of the Kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the Kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the Gospel. Now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, Jesus saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little farther thence, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who were also in the ship, mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants, and went after Jesus. Here ended the second lesson. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, for by the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who dost enkindle the flame of thy love in the hearts of the saints, grant to us, thy humble servants, the same faith and power of love, that as we rejoice in their triumphs, we may profit by their examples. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. 
Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that as thine holy apostle St. James, leaving his father and all that he had, without delay was obedient unto the calling of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and followed him. So we, forsaking all worldly and carnal affections, may be ever more ready to follow thy holy commandments. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. The lesson for the epistle is written in the 11th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, beginning at the 27th verse. In those days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch, and there stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that there should be a great dearth throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. And when also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of the first epistle of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians, beginning at the ninth verse. Brethren, I think that God hath sent forth us the latest of the apostles, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked, and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place, and labor, working with our hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer, being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world, and are the offscouring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, ye have yet not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Here endeth the epistle. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 20th chapter, beginning at the 20th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. At that time came to Jesus the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshipping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of, and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. And he said unto him, them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. But Jesus called them unto him and said, You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. 
even as the Son of Man, came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. From the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 20, verse 27, Whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today we honor the memory of the first of the apostles to be a martyr, the one who's called in the church's tradition, St. James the Great, and in, in, uh, in disrespectful modern informality, we'd say that is Big Jim. There was, of course, a little Jim also among the apostles, St. James the Less. It's important for the church to honor the apostles. This is not a frill. For apart from the apostles' witness to Christ, handed down by the church in the writings of the New Testament, our faith would have no sure foundation. It is indeed by the apostles that we have been begotten again through the gospel, reborn to God. If we don't honor the apostolic witness, we will fail to honor Christ. And in honoring the apostles, we renew our commitment to continue in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, which is to say in the faith and the love of Christ. And especially we honor the work of Christ in them. For as the Gospels candidly show us, the apostles are thick-headed, worldly, slow to believe, slow to understand, despite all their privileges. And this is profoundly encouraging. If God turned their straw into gold, he can work the same miracle with us. So, we honor the apostles because we honor and receive the doctrine which they handed down and the examples they set for us, not in virtue of their own uh, moral strength and power, but by the grace of God that made them holy. And in doing so, we grasp hold of the hope that the same God will also make us holy with them. Well, that's a general comment about the Apostles. The Feast of St. James the Great is no exception to the rule. When we see it, what we see in James in the uh, Gospel lesson for this feast is worldly ambition. Anticipating Jesus' accession to earthly power, they want uh, the uh, proximity to power, the access to power, uh, that... Uh, that, they will, that will give them power and prestige and privilege of their own. And it's clear they set up their mother, Salome, who is probably the sister of the Lord's mother, Mary. Uh, they put her up to make this request on their behalf. Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on my right hand and the other on the left, in thy kingdom. There, it's the oldest trick in the book. Use personal connections as a way of getting a straight uh, to cut out anyone who would be a rival or competitor, which of course includes their fellow disciples. 
Naturally, when the other disciples find out what they've done, they're furious. It's an anger born of envy, of course, because they only are angry because uh, they have the same ambition. Then, when Jesus asks James and John if they are ready to drink the bitter cup of wrath, which is the price of glory in his kingdom, and to share in the baptism into suffering and death, they answer with easy self-assurance, sure, we're able. Though in the event, they were proved wrong. When the temple police came for Jesus, James and John ran away just like all the other disciples. And when he took his throne upon the cross, the persons on his right hand and on his left were not James and John, but two convicted criminals. Vain ambition, the inordinate love of one's own greatness, is one of the chief manifestations of pride, the inordinate love of one's own excellence. In the pride of vainglory, of worldly ambition, we seek greatness without deserving it, as James does when he attempts to gain it by use of family connections. We seek greatness without acknowledging God's part in it, in presumption, as James does when he presumptuously and overconfidently claims he is able to drink the cup and to be baptized with the baptism that Christ is baptized with. And third, we seek greatness at the expense of others or without using it for their good, as did James and John, when they tried to cut out the other disciples from what they believe are the best places in the kingdom. All those indeed are the abuses that give worldly ambition its bad name. Yet the love of greatness in itself is natural and right. In the Christian tradition, it's called magnanimity, great-mindedness, greatness of spirit, and it is no vice. It is the will to excel, the courage to attempt great things, despite their difficulty. And in his response to James and John and the other disciples, Jesus is not trying to destroy that great-mindedness, that will to excel, that courage to attempt great things. Rather, he's seeking to purify that greatness of spirit from the deceits and illusions of vain ambition so they, they may grasp what it truly means to seek greatness in his kingdom. Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, he tells them, the cup of wrath. They shall be baptized with the baptism that he is baptized with, suffering and death. They shall know what St. Paul calls the fellowship of his sufferings. James, as today's lesson notes, was the first of the apostles to die a martyr. John, his brother, suffered exile on Patmos, not as a martyr, but as a confessor, suffering willingly for the faith he professed. Nonetheless, Jesus tells them, to sit on my right hand and on my left are not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. Greatness in the kingdom is not something we can seize or grab or steal, and certainly not earn in virtue of any natural merit or family connections or our own moral strength. It is a grace freely bestowed by the Father who gives according to his own perfect will and gives to whom those for whom it has been prepared. And so the proper stance in relation to greatness of spirit is not pride, but humility. The humility which is ready to receive greatness as a gift and hopes and relies upon the power of God rather than one's own strength to attain it. The model for greatness in the kingdom, therefore, is not found in the princes of the Gentiles, those earthly rulers who throw their weight around and lord it over their subjects. The pecking order of the world that runs from the playground to the presidency is overturned in the kingdom of God. Whosoever will be great among you, 
let him be your minister, which means your servant. And whosoever would be chief among you, let him be your servant, which is to say, your slave. Not only are we to subject ourselves to the Father's good will in all humility, but we are to subject ourselves to one another in charity, freely serving one another in love. For the grace which the Father freely bestows on each, he bestows for the benefit of all. And so greatness is not a zero-sum game, a pie of finite size in which you have to cut others out in order to maximize your own reward. In seeking each other's good, we ourselves benefit through the charity that maketh all things common. The template for greatness in the kingdom is the humility and charity of Christ himself, who came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. He made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a slave. He humbled himself, becoming obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He gave up his life, took upon himself the curse of our sin, and thereby redeemed and delivered those who were slaves to sin, and whose lives were forfeit to death and hell. In his humble service, we know ourselves redeemed from pride, presumption, and vain ambition, set free to serve him with true greatness of spirit. In the grace bestowed upon us in Jesus Christ, that it be our prayer that after the example of St. James we may forsake all worldly and carnal affections, all vain ambition, and may be evermore be ready to follow the commandments of God in the way that leads us to the true greatness of his kingdom. Amen. Amen. God is not unrighteous that he will forget your works and labor that proceedeth of love, which love ye have showed for his name's sake, who have ministered unto the saints, and yet do minister. I bid your prayers today for the glory in heaven and on earth of St. James, the great apostle and martyr, for all those who bear his name, both churches and individuals, for grace to follow his example, uh, to share his faith, uh, to imitate his humility and charity, and to have the privilege of living and dying uh, for Christ. I bid your prayers for all those who in leadership in our country, our county, our state, and community, and churches, for wisdom and good judgment in this time of trial, for those who are ministering to their sick, and for our protection and deliverance uh, from disease, for all those who mourn, and of your charity, I bid your prayers for the repose of the souls of the faithful departed. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee, most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers. that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, Give thy heavenly grace, and especially 
to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace that to follow thy, their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we yield unto thee most high praise and hearty thanks for the wonderful grace and virtue declared in all thy saints who have been the choice vessels of thy grace and the lights of the world in their several generations. Most humbly beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow the example of their steadfastness in thy faith and obedience to thy holy commandments that at the day of the general resurrection, we with all those who are of the mystical body of thy Son may be set on his right hand and hear that his most joyful voice, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Grant this, O Father, for the sake of the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you, and remain with you always. Amen.